Yo, what is up YouTube? It's Tomas Salas. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over how the classification of dive works. Everything diving, the basics. So today I just had a meet. It didn't go very well. So I thought I'd make this video in order to totally immerse myself in the sport of diving, recenter my focus in the direction of diving. So first of all is the classification of dives. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five different categories of dives. Fronts, backs, reverses, inwards, and twisters. How these dives are classified is they're classified by the first number in the diving number. There's a three number number, and at the end there's a letter that determines the position of the dive. First number in the diving number is the classification of the diving direction. So like front, back, reverse, inward. Each direction has its own number associated with that direction. So like a one is a front, a two is a back, a three is a reverse, a four is an inward. And we'll worry about twists later. The middle number in this three number number is mostly zero. Usually it's zero. For any normal dive, it's zero. The last number over here, that's your flips. That's how many flips you do. So each time it goes up by one, it goes up in half interval flips. So if I was doing a 101, that would be a front, not flying, dive. And then over here we got our position, and we'll talk about that in a second. If it was like a 402, that would be an inward, not flying, somersault, because that's two halves. Now on to the position of the dive. There are four positions in total, A, B, C, and D. A is straight, B is pike, C is tuck, and D is free. The way I remember these is an A, if you look at an uppercase A, it looks kind of like the most straight of the letters in the in the bunch. B and C are the easiest to remember because a B actually looks like a pike and a C actually looks like a tuck. The last one, D, is meant for twisters. It's a free position and you get to use any type of position in your dive. So now, bringing it all together, I will not be classifying if it is a flying dive anymore because you really don't see flying dives that often. If I'm doing a 103B, that is a one front, zero, three. That means three half intervals of a flip. So one and a half somersaults in the pike position because it's a B. It looks like a pike. Tips and tricks on how to remember the classification of the dive direction. Remember it goes one front, two back, three reverse, four inward. Back and an inward are both facing the board. Toes are on the edge of the board. You're doing a standing type flip. Both one and three, front and reverse, you have to do what is called a hurdle step in order to get yourself into a jump off of the board. So tricks I like to use in order to teach these classifications of diving directions is you look at one and two as its own category and three and four as its own category. One and two is easy three and four is hard. You you have to distinguish that those two are different difficulties of learning capabilities because three and four, reverse and inward, those aren't as well known as front and back, one and two. If you look at these both of these different categories, a one, you use a hurdle, a two, you, you're on the edge of the board. That same pattern transfers over when you're looking at a three and a four, which is a reverse, you use a hurdle, just like your one, they're both the first one in both categories are hurdle steps, and then the second one in both categories, you're on the edge of the board. So we got one and three hurdle steps, front and reverse. Don't worry about learning the hard set yet. L focus on learning the easy set, which is front and back. Front flip, back flip. Everyone's heard of a front flip and a back flip. One front, three reverse, both doing hurdles. Two back, four inward, both are toes on the board. Now, when we go into learning the hard set, we just have to think about the first set and flip them, kind of. Number three is just number two plus number one. So you add the hurdle step into the back flip. On four, you add a front flip onto the toes on the edge of the board. Tying it all together, three and four are just one and two that are mixed together in separate categories. So if you learn one and two, and then you start focusing on three and four, you'll be good. You'll start learning them. You just got to watch dive meets. You got to learn the dives. You got to be doing the dives. You're not going to be learning dive, diving orders or numbers unless you're a diver or someone who cares about diving. So that's cool, I guess. Just watch my videos. Sometimes I have them in the titles and stuff. 
Also, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel that has a bunch of one meter diving stuff that's like quality diving that you guys can watch. Also, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. We add the five. The five indicate... Water, it's good for you. It's good for you, water. Great stuff. Hydration is good for you. Anyways, where was I? Before I was rudely interrupted by my brother showering and playing loud music, we were on to twisters. So, five. That is the category for twisters. To recap, one fronts, two backs, three reverses, four inwards, and now we have five twisters. All of the one through four has three numbers, and this, category five, is the exception. Why am I burping so much? Once you see a five, you know it's a twist, disregard it. Don't even think about a five. It's there, we know it's a twist, we know it's a five. Then we look at the next three numbers. Okay, this is a little tricky. It doesn't have a flying. There's no flying somersaults and twists. The, fir the first number after the five is the direction, like normal. So like a 105B is a front two and a half pike, a 51, that's your direction. You're going forward, doing a front twister. The next two are the most easily confused two numbers in diving probably. The first one is the amount of flips you're doing, and the second one is the amount of twists you're doing. Just like the same way as the third number in the 103 is a front one and a, one and a half, it goes by half intervals. One, two, three, half intervals, one and a half. The twister goes in the exact same type of intervals for twists and flips. So if it's a 5132, it goes twister, forwards, one and a half, one twist, because two halves is one twist. At the end of it, it is most always D. When you become an elite diver, if you're doing more than two flips in your somersault, you have to designate it as a tuck or a pike, usually pike. Not a lot of people do tuck spinners. That's a bit weird in the world of diving. And that's pretty much it for springboard diving. In tower diving, there's some different things like a 612, which is an arm stand. And I'm not really sure. I'm not exactly sure how arm stands work. I'm not as versed in tower diving. Now that we have learned every single possible dive in the springboard category of diving, I'm gonna put on a little test. I'm gonna play some clips of dives and then afterwards I'm gonna put up what dive it was, the number, and see see if you can do it yourself. Starting now. Really uh, spoiled his chances with his previous dive. Yeah! Reverse to a Really uh, spoiled his chances with his previous dive. Yeah! Reverse to a
I really hope you guys learned something. Smash that subscribe button and have a great rest of your day.